Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for returning uh, for this segment. In this segment, we're going to have a conversation with Dr. Kate Mangione. She's a professor of physical therapy at Arcadia University. She's joining us on the program to talk about a recent study published in JAMA uh, that looked at the effects of home-based physical therapy on elderly hip fracture patients. Thank you for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Dr. Kate Mangione, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Well, um, uh, being professor of physical therapy there at Arcadia University, give us a brief background and some of the finer points of the study. Okay. Basically, hip fracture is one of these conditions that is devastating for the older adult, absolutely devastating. Um, It's an accident. No one wants it to happen. It's obviously very unexpected. And unfortunately, a, a large percentage of people don't return to their prior level of function. And we don't really know why. Um, medical care in the hospital has really improved. People aren't dying in hospitals. They're not, you know, getting terrible things. And bones heal, but function is not returning. So for many years, I've been trying to think about what is it? Is it just that the physical therapy isn't enough? It isn't the right kind? It's, is it the timing of it? So um, this study was really set out to say if we gave what we consider a, a really – specific multi-component intervention, um, would that indeed provide additional benefit to help these people return to their prior level of function, and specifically now, community ambulation? When you say multi-component, um, are we talking multitude of different type of exercises? Are we talking about concierge type of physical therapy for specific patients? No, by multi-component, we mean different, um, let's say, buckets of types of interventions or exercise. So there was a strength training component, which was four different exercises. There was an endurance training bucket where they would walk either hopefully outside or inside. Um, There was balance, basically exercises interweaved by the way that they did the strength training exercises. So there are different components of intervention, physical therapist interventions that we used, combined them into a single session. How many patients were involved in this particular study? Um, 210 is what we ended up with. We originally um, had wanted to recruit 300 across the three sites, and we were unable to do that in the time frame. It was very, very difficult to recruit. Was that due to um, severity of fracture, uh, time in care? No. I think the hip fracture numbers, um, a lot of the people were ineligible if they fell and fractured their hip in a nursing home, that those people were not eligible. Um, th- that was probably the biggest class of people, or they were un- not ambulatory, when, were unable to walk unassisted um, prior to their fracture. Those are probably, And then if they had certain diseases. So even though we had a group that was, so I still think, relatively common, it was still... Um, we eliminate a lot of people. Is gr- getting you know into your your sixties kind of a no? Sixties is too young. Sixties is too young. Um, it, it really is. The average age is eighty, eighty one for a hip fracture. Sixties is pretty darn rare still, and the largest. Mm, let me think. In our study, I believe the eighty to eighty nine group was the largest group of people. It's not a. It's not really a young person's condition. So of these uh, patients that sustained a a hip fracture, either from falling or were there any fractures that resulted just as a a, a result of the bone just becoming brittle and maybe bumping into something? Is that how severe some of these patients were? All of our patients had a, what we call a a, um, non-traumatic, it wasn't like a car accident or a fall from a high ladder, but they did all have a fall. So it's, we really won't ever know if they if the bone broke first or if they fell, but they, it was always associated with a fall. You mentioned these buckets, types of uh, exercise regimens or care regimens. What types uh, were used in these home uh, care situations? We did all three. We yeah. did strength training. We brought in a, a device, a portable device mm-hmm. that could provide a, quite a lot of resistance for the older adult. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, really up to maybe 100 pounds of force with, mm-hmm. with elastic tubing. So if they were laying down on either the bed or the floor, it would be like um, like a younger person doing a leg press exercise, very much like that. So each leg could get up to 100 pounds of resistance. Um, uh, they did another exercise where they worked the side muscles in the um, hips and then other standing and uh, two other standing exercises. So they did all those. And then they also did 20 minutes of endurance training. 
So are, are we talking, you know, rather than 50 pounds of force being used at their home, we're upping the force that's being used at the home? Uh, there's, it's not a different exercise. It's just um, more of it. Uh, so, right. We did the same four exercises and increased the force over time. Exactly. Okay. And let me give you an example. You don't ever see a home care therapist or most therapists giving an older adult a load of 100 pounds in a leg press. That's not so common. Definitely not in home care. Um, maybe if they went to an outpatient clinic and they had the right equipment, people could do those kinds of loads. But it's unusual for that. In fact, probably unheard of for that kind of loads to be done in the home care setting. Are devices necessary? Are, are they mandatory? Are some patients able to um, get more rigorous, more strenuous exercise once they're able to, say, move that 100 pounds or have that 100 pounds of force with that elastic successfully? Are they able to, to move on forward and do more things, getting back to their before life? Well, that's what the that's what the goal was, um, and those will be some of the secondary papers that we do to really see that the people who really did achieve the highest levels were they um, successful in achieving the outcomes that we wanted. In the whole big group analysis, that we didn't see a return to that. All right, but again, it, that doesn't say that they got up to the highest levels of force. So um, that's a great question that we really do need to tease out in subsequent papers. Where do you see um, home health care for these types of patients going in the future as a result of, of these uh, results of the study? Well, it's interesting because our, the, the person on average, when they started our study, was finished with what we call you know, Medicare reimbursed therapy. So that was about three months after fracture. Home care could begin much earlier. But I do think that some of our patients did start as early as two months, maybe even a little bit earlier, I think one or two patients. And I'm hoping that for home care that they begin to think about increasing the intensity of the work that they do. So, you know, having people just move their legs against gravity, just like lifting your leg up and down, that's not a whole bunch of uh, force that's required from your muscles when I'm saying that these other people can be doing 100 pounds. You see what I mean? So what we're trying to get is that people start to really think about loading the muscles earlier and more aggressively, again, with professional supervision so that they can get stronger. Well, I thank you for joining us here on the program this morning. Um, Is there a website where our listeners can get uh, some more information on this study? Well, actually, the paper, because it was funded by the National Institutes of Health, is free on available for everybody online. So if they would go to JAMA and look up the, the title of the study, they would absolutely be able to get download the whole article, see all the appendices. Um, so it's the effect of multi-component home-based physical therapy intervention on ambulation after hip fracture in older adults. So if they put all that into their search engine, they'll come up with that from JAMA, and they can, they can see the whole the whole details. And then keep looking for additional studies is what I would say because we'll, they'll be coming out. Well, thank you again for your time, and um, I hope we'll be talking again. Thanks so much. Have a good one. You too. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au.